Amir Khan is a popular Bollywood actor, producer and director. He started his career as an actor in 1988 in a tragic romance film, Kayamat Se Kayamat Tak. Amir has won various national awards for his performance in films. He is also a recipient of India's highest honours, Padma Shri and Padma Bhusan. Amir Khan is also UNICEF's Goodwill Ambassador for South Asia. He recently visited Bhutan to meet children affected by malnutrition and to witness how UNICEF is working to address stunting in Bhutan. To find out more, a producer, Sanam Demma, caught up with him. Since you have so many achievements, I want to uh, ask first about UNICEF. You were appointed as the Goodwill Ambassador for UNICEF for South Asia in 2014. Uh, what motivated you to take this journey? Well, I think that uh, when I got to know a few years ago about the malnutrition in India, uh, that, is the, that was the starting point for me, when a group of uh, members of parliament from different political parties, they came to me and they said that this is an issue in India which is very concerning. And all the political parties are actually united on this one platform of malnutrition and they requested me to be involved in this. Um, so that was the start of the journey for me. Uh, then I went along with these uh, member of parliaments, the MPs, to meet the Prime Minister to request uh, that uh, a strong messaging needs to be done to the country, to for the people across the country, and India is a large country. So for people to, across the country to understand what are the basics of malnutrition and what are the basic steps that we can take to look after our children and to make sure that you know they have a healthy life. So that really was a starting point for me and that's when I got involved with UNICEF. And at first I worked within India and now I'm working in South Asia. So over 40% of children in South Asia have been facing stunting. Hmm. How does this affect our life in general? Well, you know, um, for a child who has not received the right kind of nutrition <clears throat> in, in the first two years, right from the time that the mother conceives the baby, uh, those are the very two critical years for every child. Uh, the damage that is done in those two years is not possible to repair in most cases. So, uh, you know, stunting uh, f for any individual, for any child, uh, for for the child to be healthy mentally, physically and emotionally. Uh, so stunting really affects the child in every way. And uh, it affects society at, at large as well. It affects the personal life of the child. It affects the life of society because, you know, we would want that all of us are healthy individuals, productive in individuals uh, in every way. So what can we do to work together and help each other? Well, I think that, um, so there are a lot of levels that we can work on. Individually, we have to follow the good practices. Um, for example, uh, the, the basics being that from the time that the baby is conceived by the mother, the nutrition to the mother should be sufficient for herself and the baby. Uh, it should be a good balanced diet uh, so that the the mother can feed the child within her. Uh, the family has to respect that and the family has to help out in the mother uh, taking the right kind of rest and nutrition. And when the baby is born, the second most uh, important step is, the second step which is equally important is uh, the moment the child is born, the, for the first two to three days the breastfeeding is very important because at that time in the first two, two, two to three days uh, the mother's milk has got certain qualities which uh, give the child immunity to certain diseases. Thereafter, for the first, the third important step is that for the first six months, the child should be only breastfed. Um, no other, nothing else should be given to the baby. Only breastfed and not even water or nothing. Water is, is one of the biggest carriers of diseases. Uh, and after the first six months, for the next one and a half year, which means till the child is two years old, the child should be breastfed, breastfeeding should continue for two years. But after six months, you can start some other nutritious food, uh, you know, which is natural organic food that you can give the baby. Mm. So, uh, 
the, the, this is a very important stage that we call it the thousand you know the golden days the thousand golden days um, so the steps that we can take is that we make sure this message reaches across uh, you know the across all of south asia uh, and each individual government in all of the countries and all of the regions should be aware of this should be able to provide facilities uh, health centers for people across the country to access these health centers and there should be regular uh, checkups for the mother before the baby is born and even after the baby is born for the mother and the baby so these health facilities need to be enough to reach everyone and the people and the facilities in these health units should be sufficient uh, the the people working here should be well trained so these are the th things that we need to work on to make sure that every last child is reached uh, according to recent survey about 21% of bhutanese children mm. are facing stunting mm -hmm. uh, so it was 33% uh, in 2010 yes so although there's slight improvement mm. w what is your view as the good ambassador well, i think it's it's quite a remarkable improvement i think uh, in bhutan the number of uh, markers indicate that there's been remarkable improvement here in bhutan uh, that's really encouraging to see and it speaks very highly it speaks very well for the leadership here which is taking, uh, you know, initiative in this. Um, but as I said earlier, there's still work to be done. As you pointed out, there's still a number of children who are going through stunting, and uh, the the real aim is to reach every last child. Mm -hmm. So there is still work to be done. So in Bhutan, we have uh, six months maternity leave mm -hmm. for working mothers. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're referring to the uh, 1,000 golden days. Yes. So it's uh, kind of difficult to cope. So what right. would be your suggestion? My suggestion would be that for the first six months, I mean, not only government offices, but, you know, even private offices, for the first six months, it should be the very least that you, the mother gets, very least that the mother gets maternity leave. If it can be for two years, nothing like it. That's ideal. Uh, but in in the at the very least after six months, uh, you know, offices and uh, business houses can create a space like a nursery. I think UN over here has that, where if the mother is working, her baby is close by, close enough so that she can uh, feed the baby every now and then, and be connected with the baby. Um, but you're right, ideally, the, the maternity leave should be for two years. That's ideal. And as a goodwill ambassador, uh, what are your advices to uh, Bhutanese parents and uh, children and uh, our viewers in general? Well, you know, uh, I'm a parent myself. Uh, I'm also learning <laughs> as I go along. But I think my advice to parents would be to follow the, uh, the health guidelines for their child. Not, not just the health guidelines. I think uh, it's very important for the growth of the child, the overall growth of the child, for the child to have security. Every child must feel secure. Uh, you know, I was speaking to a psychiatrist once when I was researching this issue of, uh, you know, children's health and, you know, mental health and physical health. So he told me something very interesting. He said, you know, every child needs four things. He said, one is security. The child must always feel secure in his surroundings, in his or her surroundings with the parents. Sometimes, you know, parents get upset with their children and they say, we will send you away or something. You know, even small little words like this really affect the child very deeply. So the child must always have a sense of security. The second most important thing he said for children is trust and faith. The child should always feel that the parents trust him or her. And the child should be able to trust the parents. You know, there should be blind trust for the parents. So that trust and faith has to be maintained with the children. The third important thing he said is, is, is self-esteem. We must never harm the dignity, the self-respect or the self-esteem of the child. Sometimes children are naughty. At that time, sometimes as parents, we get very harsh on them and we treat them like criminals. 
as if there is a court case going on <laughs> you know and we insult the child we speak very uh, in an irresponsible manner sometimes out of our anger um and then the child feels very insulted and he feels very small uh, and when you harm the self esteem of a child it it really impacts the child in very very deep ways and the fourth thing he said was love we must give the children a lot of love and then he pointed out that the love it comes last first is these three things security trust and self esteem because if you don't give these three things and you only give love then that is of no use a lot of parents are very loving to their children they hug their children they kiss their child but they are very rude to the child <laughs> they don't give a sense of security they uh, you know constantly crushing the self esteem then they're giving them a kiss so that kind of love is meaningless uh, so these are the four things i think that every parent should keep in mind when they're dealing with the children um security trust and faith uh self esteem and you know respect of the child uh, you can always tell the child i didn't like what you did and explain to the child but don't insult him um other than that i think you know my advice to children is just have a good time <laughs> childhood is the best time of your life and um the 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 one or two things i would like to see in children is a sense of caring uh, and that is something that parents can you know uh, give to their children that a uh, emotion of caring you care for the other child and if the other child is uh, is unhappy about something or is facing some challenges instead of teasing the child you support the child so a sense of caring that's that's one important me- message we can give to our children um you know i often feel that at least back home in india parents are very competitive they want the child to come first in everything <laughs> they should be first in if the child is 3 years old and is in nursery in the school they have the lemon and spoon race so that also they want the child to come first in <laughs> so you want the child to come first from the lemon and spoon race till college you want the child to do well in everything so much pressure we put on the children that's not nice i feel um the other thing it does is that children then grow up with an understanding that it is important for me to come first to succeed in everything that i do and that becomes the priority of the child two things happen the children grow up doing whatever they have to to succeed and they think that's all right and uh some of the children succeed in this manner but a lot of them don't and the ones who don't feel very crushed so our yardstick for success becomes a very dangerous thing for our children uh so every time the child comes home the parent will ask how how many marks did you get in your exam did you stand first in class did you get the highest marks so the child grows up understanding that this is most important to my parents instead of this if the parents were to ask the child when he comes home from school that uh, did you help someone today you know did you bring a smile to someone's face today and you never ask him about his marks and uh, grades then the child grows up realizing that my it's important to my parents that i'm useful to society i'm helpful to my friends uh, and that message if the child grows up with then when when the child is 18 you have a society of young people who are very caring so i feel these are really important things that we can do with our children and you know for children children should have a good time we should not put pressure on the kids <laughs> So my message to the kids is that have a good time always care for your friends. Yeah. Is this great expectations from parents one of the reasons of suicides in India? Uh you know suicides is a very technical issue and I'm not um I I don't think I'm uh qualified to speak about suicides because if I say something wrong it can have a bad impact. But in general I think 
uh, it's important for the emotional health of everyone yes you're right when you set very high, ex high expectations um, then the disappointment also is that much higher uh, some people are born sometimes genetically you know i believe that uh, you can have suicidal tendencies uh, sometimes mental health is an issue so you know when we look at the health of children it's not just the physical health and the emotional health but also the mental health of a child is needs to be looked into and unfortunately in india and i believe here also in in bhutan the number of mental health professionals is alarmingly low we need a lot more mental health professionals to be able to look after the mental health of our countries uh, a lot of mental health patients go undetected when they actually can be helped you know and there is a lot of stigma attached to mental health as well uh, i often you know we discuss amongst our friends and we say that when i have a cough and cold i don't hesitate to go to a doctor <laughs> it's i it's not something i feel ashamed of if i am not well for something i am happy to go to a doctor to feel better but if i am in depression or if i have some psychological problem i don't want to there is a stigma attached to it i don't want to seek help uh, whereas we should look at mental health exactly like we look at physical health and there is help available there are, there is medication available there is expert help available uh, for mental health as well um so so these are the things you know i i feel yeah and moving on to bollywood yeah uh, your movies are mainstream cinema mm. yet uh, some of them are very unconventional mm. so what are your priorities uh, when you act or direct a movie well when i select a film to act in or to produce or to direct uh, there's only one thing i think of is the script a script which excites me does it touch my heart does it make me laugh or cry it does it engage me emotionally so i look at my personal reaction to a script and if i love a script then i do it many times when i'm doing a script it may seem very impractical to the market forces they might feel why is he doing a film about a child who's got dyslexia there's a film i did called tare zameen par when i did that uh, the market used to wonder why i'm doing a film in which the child is a lead role and i come half way into the film um and nobody knows about dyslexia why are we making why is he making a film about a learning disability which nobody even knows about uh but i love that story and i wanted to do it you know so i go with my heart i just follow my heart and what i love to do i just do that there might be a special reason behind your latest film as well where you are of a father of four, father daughters, of four yeah, daughters yeah the film is called dangal it's dangal means wrestling yes and it's a story about a father and his four daughters uh, it's essentially a story about the empowerment of the girl child um very very briefly it's about a father who who's a wrestler who's very much passionate about wrestling and his dream is to win an international gold for india a dream that he can never fulfill and he decides that uh, his son will fulfill that dream but he doesn't have a son he gets four daughters over the 18 years uh, and then the story is about how the daughter fulfills his dream so is it in a way to promote girl child it is mm -hmm. it is uh, and um, it's also very inspiring film it's it's a film uh, it's a true story this mm -hmm. is a true story about mahavir fogat i'm playing the character of mahavir mm -hmm. and his two elder daughters geeta and babita fogat they are from a small village in india uh, from haryana state mm -hmm. called balali so it's a true story actually so your personal view can an artist or filmmaker change a nation or contribute to nation building you know i think that uh, perhaps the artist the creative people in society are perhaps the best equipped to affect a nation um you know leaders and politicians make policy decisions they make laws and a lot of them uh, are good laws and good policies but you have to get the nation to follow it 
if there is a law and I don't follow it, what is the use of the law? Uh, if there is a policy and I don't follow it, what is the use of the policy? So politicians and leaders work from up. That's very important. It's not that it's not important. It's very important. And if with the right leadership like we see in Bhutan, you can make a lot of difference. Artists and creative people start from down. They affect each and every individual whom they reach. And I've often felt that, you know, doctors give health to society, uh, the judiciary gives justice, the police gives law and order. What does the creative person offer to society? And I feel that the creative person not only entertains society, and when I say creative person, I mean painter, artist, musician, singer, writer, dancer, actor, performing arts, filmmakers, all the arts. Creative people, what do they offer to society? I feel they bring grace to society. They can strengthen the social fabric of society. They can instill values in people. They can instill values in children. They can inspire you. Uh, they can fill you with hope. Uh, with, through our stories and through our art, we can affect lives and we can reach the hearts of people and we can change minds. So I think in nation building, perhaps the, perhaps the most important people are in fact the creative people. Uh, they are the people, for example, me as a kid, as I was growing up, one of the biggest influences that was on me was the books I read. Uh, you know, and uh, even if it's a children's book, there's so much to imbibe from it and absorb from it. Um, so I think that the creative people actually are the people who are in a position, if they so choose to do, to really do uh, work of nation building and building societies and strengthening societies. Your popular series, uh, television series, Satya Me Jaiti, mm. is an eye-opener for society and a great uh, example of investigative journalism. Mm. How did you become a part of this journey? Well, it, it, was, it was a long journey for me when, before I reached here. And I think for me, it really was a feeling that I needed to do more. I need to do more. I've got so much love and respect for my country and the people of my country. And my country has given me so much. And I used to constantly feel that I, I want to do something. Uh, that was a feeling inside me, that I wanted to do something to give back to society. And then I thought that perhaps the best way to do that is through my own profession, through my own strengths. My strengths are storytelling. I reach out to people. Communication is my strength. Um, so I must use that skill that I have learned over so many years to give back to society. And that is how I got this idea of doing this TV show. And we take up issues and first we research them thoroughly ourselves to understand the issue. And then we put it forward to the people through the show. That's how it started, yeah. So is uh, your next uh, season uh, uh, about water crisis in Haryana? Oh, uh, n not about water crisis in Haryana, but um, we have done three seasons of Satya Me Vijayate. And at the end of the three seasons, my friend Satyajit Bhatkal, who is the director of the show, he and I were talking one day and we were thinking of season four. And then we said, what if we don't do season four, but instead the entire team of Satya Me Vijayate, which is a very committed team, very sensitive team. If that team works on, we take any one issue and instead of making a TV program on it, what if we work on ground in that issue? Can we contribute more? That is a question we asked ourselves. And we decided that we would like to give it a try. So we, the issue we thought of was water because that's a very fundamental issue and it's a growing concern you know, as the years pass. So water is the issue that we selected and we decided to start from the state that we belong to, which is Maharashtra, which has severe droughts every year. Uh, and a lot of areas of Maharashtra has pr water problems. So we decided to start with that. And my, so me and Satya and our entire team of Satya Mevjayate are currently working uh, on this issue. And we are working very closely with the government of Maharashtra. Our chief minister, Mr. Fadnavis, is 
very actively involved and he is this is one of his key concerns uh, water so so there's no tv show because of that <laughs> because because we are working on ground on the water issue so we cannot do a tv show at the same time so which is why for some time now you won't see our show on tv because we are working on ground uh, we are still working as communicators but we are working on ground with this issue you know until we can hopefully uh, you know bring an end to it and since we have limited time as we end uh, tell us what are your biggest achievement as an actor and as a person oh <laughs> i don't know what my achievements are i suppose i'm very grateful that i've been able to do the work that i enjoy doing um and it has been my good fortune to work with a lot of really talented people uh, and i have worked and grown with them um i think uh usually when i look at my life whether professionally or personally uh it's a little difficult for me to the kind of person i am it's a little difficult for me to think about my achievements i'm usually thinking about my flaws and what i can do better <laughs> so i i i get a little foxed when you ask me what are my achievements i don't know i think my achievements are just that i'm you know i mean i'm happy doing what i'm doing uh and in my personal life i have a beautiful family um my parents have brought us up really well and my children are really beautiful children and my siblings and my wife so i'm very grateful for that um yeah well before we end you know i want to say that my 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 visit here in bhutan has been really wonderful and i had heard so much about bhutan and i've come here and uh i find it's even better than what i had heard um the place is beautiful of course but the people are even more beautiful than the place and i feel that there is so much to learn uh, for us from the people of bhutan uh, so i'm very happy to be here and i hope to come back soon last question it's my personal curiosity yeah did your daughter draw a part of taksang uh, yeah yeah my daughter was here in bhutan oh okay and she made uh, a painting of the tiger's nest yes yes yeah i can show it to you that would be nice yeah i'll share it with you you can show it on your tv yes. show yes, yeah please. thank you very much for your time and uh, for sharing your wonderful thoughts thank with you. us thank, thank you, you.